Welcome to Nightlife. Bite-sized food. Sugar, you all know that too much of it is a dietary evil and one of the major causes of diabetes and obesity. But if you've got a sweet tooth... Gee, it's hard to avoid, isn't it? And even if you don't, it sneakily shows up in all sorts of foods as well. Let's meet Dr. David Kanner. He's a scientist who's invented technology to help produce a low GI sugar. And his company, Nutrition Innovations, just been recognised by the UN as one of the world's 50 best small and medium companies transforming food systems for a better tomorrow. He joins us uh, uh, on the program tonight. David, good evening and welcome to Nightlife. Good evening, Philip. Thanks for having me. Tell me... Loved your intro. <laughs> <laughs> Remi- r- remind us about GI, the glycemic index. What, what, what is it anyway? So glycemic index or glycemic response is the way that we respond to uh, carbohydrates, uh, particularly in fats and uh, you know, other foods like that, whereby it translates into a spike of blood glucose. And so clearly, if you're a diabetes, if you're a diabetic and suffer from diabetes, or you you you, you know you're at risk of diabetes, then um, your pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, and you've got some struggles with um, with ma- well modulating that glucose response. And the higher that spike goes, then the more at risk you are. And so, it, it, the aim of um, lower glycemic food is to manage this blood glucose response so that you're managing the risk of diabetes. So low GI doesn't does it mean low sugar? Uh, not necessarily. It just means that um, uh, it's a lower blood glucose response. So, for example, the product that we're, um, the, 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 te- the technology that we developed and the products that, uh, that come out using the technology is that you have a lower blood glucose response. So it's not lower sugar so much as it is lower blood glucose response. And it's not uncommon. Um, we're, we're a little bit of a, uh, with a sugar product, we're a little bit behind the eight ball because right. there are other products like, you know. Okay. So in the past when I've spoken about the low GI foods, the talk's been about foods that release their glucose more glucose slowly. Slowly, yes, like, correct. For example, it's better to eat oats than cornflakes, for example, yes, for that reason. Yes, yeah, indeed, yeah. So unrefined carbohydrates, for example, as I was saying, we're, we're a little bit behind with sugar because unrefined wheat, unrefined or less refined wholemeal wheat, wholemeal rice mm. uh, or brown rice, um, it, you know, more, run, more unrefined carbohydrates. There's governments that are moving towards encouraging us to eat unrefined foods and particularly unrefined carbohydrates because they're typically longer and slower to digest in, in our body. Okay, so that's, so, so that's the low GI. Okay, yes. all right. So it, it sort of seems a contradiction in terms to have a low GI sugar. Yeah, <laughs> it's well spotted. It, it is actually a bit unusual, but um, which is in fact a part of the, the surprise that, that we found is that when you... Um, when you left it as an unrefined product, it's just slower to, to digest. It's like having more fiber or more of the polyphenols or more right. of the, um, the, you know, the natural products that are, that are removed when you over refine any food. And right. so if you leave them there, it just makes it more complicated for us to digest and slows down. Interestingly though, Philip, that I think this is where the UN award has been um, uh, highlighting is that um, a lot of the unrefined foods, there was a shift of, um, uh, towards some, um, Fiber, for example, and fiber is uh, thought to actually fuel the microbiome, mm-hmm. and um, that's a big, you know, there's a big move towards understanding that. But the microbiome is also um, it picks up those polyphenols and, and complexes them, and then sends them around the body. Uh, around the body, um, some companies now are actually calling them postbiotics. So there's prebiotics, the fuel for the probiotics, which are the bugs, and then postbiotics, which are the products that the probiotic, the pro- probiotics actually produce. Right, and so. This is where this, these sort of unrefined carbohydrates are becoming important because they produce these compounds. So you're, so you're, what you're trying to do, or not trying to do, but have done, is to produce a sugar that would release blood glu- glucose more slowly. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Would so, it, would, why do we like sugar? Do, do, we like sugar because we presumably get blood glucose quickly, don't we? Uh, which I think it's a lot to do with sweets associated with not something that's poisonous as mm. uh, historically and ethnobotany, you know, we've picked up all sorts of sweet foods and that tells us and sends a message about, well, what does this food mean? Is it a toxic product? Cause normally toxic products are not necessarily sweet. Um, but the problem is, is that I think we've tampered with that a little bit by over refining foods. And right. so that's where, um, that's where this trend and it's not a, like, it's not just happened recently. It's over, a, 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 you know, the last decade or so where there's a move back to unrefined foods entirely. And uh, this is just a, as I said, in a long line 
that look, sugar reduction is an important thing for us to, to try and achieve. Um, because we found interestingly with the low glycemic sugars, the less refined brown sugars, that they're sweeter. And these natural caramel notes that are left in with the polyphenols that actually slow the, di slow the digestion actually make the sugar sweeter. Okay. Um, ba Baker's Delight, for example, used this product here in Australia from Sunshine Sugar. And then uh, this became um, an interesting opportunity for them to lower sugar content simply because it was about 20% sweeter. Um, so that was an interesting well, so, so if I think about products like uh, molasses or, or even uh, in Australia, a product like golden syrup, which I yep. think is a trade name, get name but uh, it's essentially a, a, a less refined version of sugar. Uh, well, yes. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it, dark, etc. Do they, so are those type, I mean, are those kinds of sugar lower in GI than say refined white sugar? Yes, good question, and not necessarily, which is, again, the intrigue, which is why we, we developed this specification in the, in the technology. Mm -hmm. um, in golden syrup, for example, and then some of the soft brown sugars are available, some of the ways that they can be made is just by refining the sugar to white refined and then spraying molasses back onto the white refined sugar. Right. Now, that, that doesn't necessarily mean unrefined sugar. I mean, it adds, it adds product back, but for an industrial product, it tends to be um, sticky, like the small bags that you get to make your, you know, to make your Anzac biscuits yeah. um, tend to only be small because they, they then um, have uh, fructose and glucose, more, more of the fructose and brings in water. And so it can't be handled industrially. So our technology was also to allow the, the industry to actually go to a, an industrial version, like what you would see in a raw sugar, but a, a consistent raw sugar. Okay. So, so, what, so tell me, what, what, what do you do? I mean, uh, sugar, at least from sugar cane, is made from the, the juice of sugar cane, which is, which is this, what, essentially reduced and concentrated and crystallized. Correct, yeah. What, what, so, do you, what do you do to it? So a company like uh, Sunshine Sugar, uh, the Condong Mill up in uh, northern New South Wales, uh, the technology just retrofits into the, into the mill and it mm -hmm. allows it to actually consistently produce a product to a specification that we know is low glycemic. And so it's, um, uh, it allows them to actually then just uh, produce to the same specification season on, season on, season on going forward. So. Okay, so does I mean does low GI sugar taste as sweet as processed sugar? Yes, yes. As I said you, you put it beside raw sugar; it's very similar, um, but, uh, but the brown sugars tend to be sweeter. Um, but we've okay. also used that the, the United Nations Award was also not just for that product; it was also um, the concentrated polyphenols and also this other product we call New Cane Life, and that is a that's a technology that's um, gone into. Um, spray drying the sugar so instead of crystallizing it we spray dry it and we make it a, um, a low lower bog density so you get the same volume but inside there's all these little bubbles and so you can get up to about 70 percent sugar reduction so that was also so it's getting technology out so that we can get healthier choices but to, again towards sugar reduction yeah. you're also developing a sugar powder that's designed to reduce sugar yes that's the product i was just referring to okay that, right that's yeah, yeah that's becoming important because uh, I mean, sugar reduction is a challenge. Um, so, yeah. for example, in chocolates, um, if you take out, uh, just say it was a milk chocolate with maybe 40, 50% sugar, if you take out the sugar, then you've got to put something back in. Otherwise, you've got half the size uh, of, of the bar. And, um, and so it became a bit of a problem. So when we launched um, uh, in, I think it was about the end of 2019, um, we, we launched this innovation. Um, we, had, we had quite an overwhelming uh, response back from the industry about how um, removing sugar from food is not so easy as, as what you'd think. So the, the food companies trying to remove this bulking agent, uh, and it's an inexpensive bulking agent in comparison to what else they, they, they could use, um, becomes a problem. If you actually put in an artificial sweetener that's, say, four or 500 times sweeter, then that's four or 500 times less bulk. And so you don't have a bulk filler, and that's what sugar is used for in the food industry as well. So that's one aspect that's a challenge. And sugars also work, it's a very, you know, very natural sweet that we know, and we, you know, it's the gold standard. And so mm. some of the other sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, intense sweeteners, uh, typically have a, or can have a, um, an aftertaste, a metallic aftertaste. And so that becomes a challenge. Um, not that there's no place for them, it's just that there are some challenges and it doesn't necessarily translate to just because they're available means that you can use them in every application. Yeah. This is a bit personal for you, isn't it? Because uh, your, your brother suffered from and, and indeed died from diabetes. Yes, and unfortunately, a brother-in-law. So he, um, 
uh, he had a problem with it, tried to manage it. And um, as you said in your introduction, it's a challenge because uh, sugar's almost smuggled into a lot of foods. And, mm. and um, it, is a, it is a bit of a problem. I, I've tried, I remember my, um, my brother-in-law uh, trying to manage the same thing and we discussed um, but a lot of foods he liked and uh, drinks and beverages, uh, you know, he struggled with. And so this was, um, I mean, it was a motivation, but there's, you know, there's over 1.4 diabetics in Australia. And so it's, it's, it's a fastest growing uh, chronic condition. And, and, and so it impacts so many people. And so I thought, gosh, it's, if we can do something, we should. And um, we, we sh that's what essentially right. what motivated us. See, so I, just to make it clear, are you, are you trying to market another product or are you saying... Here's a technology that sugar companies could use to make their products less less uh, less GI, or it's to lower the their GI. Yeah. So our business is actually in licensing the technology or, right. or to sugar companies all over the world. So we don't make anything. Uh, right. our, we just develop the technology with our great partners, Foss and Schneider, uh, Schneider Electric, and they take the engineering solutions out and they work with the, the, right. the sugar companies. Well, I mean, do you see? Uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know how close we are to seeing. A packet of low GI sugar on the supermarket shelf. Yes, in Australia, Sunshine Sugar uh, have launched the product. Um, right, okay. It's uh, it's uh, available and becoming more available. Uh, they're working with the other uh, grocery retailers to be able to get product out, as far as I'm aware. Um, but that uh, if it's not on the shelf, there's also online sales. I think that Sunshine Sugar uh, um, uh, have helped with another company. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, yeah, so the low GI sugar is available. But if you put a, a spoonful of that in your tea, it tastes as sweet as the high GI, does it? Probably sweeter. Yeah. So okay. you can back yeah. it off, back it off a little. Really? Okay. Yeah. Even though it's better for you in that sense. Well, yes, but I mean, the, you know, the mantra is that we should be cutting down on, on too many carbohydrates full stop. Yes. Um, and so, you know, with moderation. I but mean, but teaspoon for teaspoon, the, 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 the lower GI sugar is better for you. Um, yeah, I think it's probably, as you said earlier, it's probably best that, we, you know, we look at it, it's a sweeter product. It's, it's something that you can actually, um, uh, I think back off so that we, the, the aim is to try and get less sugar in our diet. Mm, yeah, of course. Um, and, uh, and so that's, it, it, it helps impact on that meaningfully. Mm, okay. Interesting. All right, David, terrific to have your time. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You've been listening to a nightlife podcast. For more great conversations about the issues that impact you, as well as features on travel and food, head to the Nightlife webpage. You'll find it at abc.net.au slash nightlife. You don't need to be a night owl to enjoy the nightlife.